going to separate the glute muscles. We're going to look at the glute muscles in a, a, a lots of detail, which is really nice because they're not just glutes. Okay, you've got like I like to put them into three different categories. I'm sure other people will do differently, but three different categories. First of all, the hip extensors. So like your glute max is the big hip extensor, yeah? So everyone agree with that? Glute max is the big hip extensor. So if you're in parallel going straight back, like in walking parallel, then your glute max is going to be activating a lot. To maintain and control leg alignment, if you're turning in, rotating in, or rotating out at the hip joint, so we're just talking about the hip joint, the external hip rotators are very, very important as well um, for posture and for, for maintaining strength. So we're going to have a look at external hip rotators in a, in a great deal of detail. <coughs> and then you've also got the more lateral um, glute muscles, which is glute medius working really t um, hard for, the, for that lateral pelvic stability and control of the lateral shift of the pelvis. So when you're standing on one leg, your glute max yeah, is definitely working to hold you up against gravity. But it's the glute medius that's actually stopping you from dipping. Do you know that? You know how we looked at um, the dipping or the hitching of the pelvis in the core and pelvis um, workshop as well. So we're going to divide the, the glute muscles into three groups. The hip extensors, the external rotators and the lateral um, stabilizers. And we'll have a look at those and some exercises for those. So you've got some good butt, you'll have beautiful butts on your clients for forever after that. The optimal, optimal leg alignment is always the middle of the hip joint. So the hip joint's right here sitting at the front. The middle of the hip joint, going down through the middle of the knee joint, the axis of the knee joint, and then coming down. Now some textbooks say between first and second toe, and others say over second toe. So I always like to do second toe as the, the alignment, because so many people are always, the knees are coming in, aren't they? Have you noticed that when you know, they do squats and the knees are always coming together? So the more people can think about opening, getting those butt muscles working, getting that hip, knee, second toe, that's the best alignment. So lunges, squats, um, leg presses, any sort of, anything where you're bending the knees, standing or seated exercise, you need to be focusing on that leg alignment. Literally all roads lead to patellofemoral pain. So it's like a secondary problem of the knee. There's always something else underlying it, um, causing it in the first place, but there's so many reasons why you get it. So I really want you to get that under control because all of your clients, sometimes if they've had a slight ligament tear, the ligament heals, but they end up with patellofemoral pain because they, you haven't um, gotten all the muscles activated and, and going again. So if you can just get that under control, that's a really big help for all of your clients, even in the classes as well. So two things about the need to, to remember. First of all, you've got a joint here, which is your femur and your tibia, so tibia femoral joint, that's one joint. That one's a really big load-bearing joint, isn't it? Like a lot of weight goes through that, that poor knee, so it's got a huge big meniscus in there to maintain the, the knee joint. Then you also have patellofemoral, it's got a patellofemoral joint, um, which is your patella just floating around on the top of your femur, okay? The problem with this joint is that it's not like a, a closed joint, there's no synovial fluid inside it, there's no ligaments surrounding it. Your patella is actually what's called a sesamoid bone, which is like a floating bone that's totally encased within muscle. So your sesamoid bone is like a little bit of a, um, it's to increase the leverage of your quads, your quads um, pull on the femur and on the tibia. So it's like a little bit of a lever, it's like those pulley things, you know, where the ropes go over the top of it, that's basically what it is biomechanic-wise. So the patella is basically held in place on top of the, the femur by your quads muscle, which is a good thing, but it's also a really bad thing because if your quads muscle isn't exactly balanced, medial to lateral, then this patella can get pulled around to whichever part is the tightest or the strongest, okay? So what happens is because we're not perfectly balanced and doing things in all directions all day long and exercising all day long, we end up with one leg crossed over more than the other, so tighter on one side and we're right-handed and all these sorts of things. The patella ends up, in 99% of the cases, getting pulled slightly across to the outside. So you can see the blue line is where it should be sitting and this is the patella getting pulled across to the outside. If you're ever worried, wondering where you are with the knee, which side's out, which side's in, the fibula is always on the outside. So just look for fibula and then you know which way is the outside, okay? So this is my right knee. You're looking, you're looking at my right knee, okay? So, um, so patella is very much um, at the mercy of what the quads muscles are doing where they come down and attach onto it, okay? So you've got on the inside the quad muscle. Everyone knows that's the vastus medialis, yeah? 
The vastus medialis has a really cool thing, which is called the vastus medialis oblique, which is a, a little bit of a, an extra bit sort of attached onto it, which is a more obliquely orientated fibres, that's, that's the name, oblique, so that it can pull medially on the patella. So it has a medial pull on the patella, that's its function. Lifting up, just do toes straight up towards the ceiling to start with. They're not rolled out or in. One hand either side and just very gently activating quads to see how the, what the recruitment is. It's like doing a hip extensor test, you know, just a test and to see. Now, who's the, who feels the inside one first, slightly yeah. before, yeah? Very good, excellent work. And who feels the outside one a bit before? Who's the good? <laughs> right, we need to work on that one. And you know those feet that just stay still and straight? It's almost like there's no flexion at all um, in the in the joint here, the metatarso, phalangeal joint, the end, end joint up here. So how is she doing any push off? Like there's no quick walk. All of her her going forward with the leg is coming from hip flexor. So she's getting hip flexor tendonitis, which is something that is very common as well because if your glute muscles aren't working, so you load up the front of the hip as well. But no toe off, no push off with your toe. You're just gonna exacerbate the whole thing either, aren't you? So you have to get Mobility of the toe can actually get rid of, you know, hip flexor problems, which is you never think of it, you know. But it's literally the whole thing really does have to be looked at and exercised.